to my YouTube channel Pathology Learning. I am Dr. Monica. So today's class will be on ferroptosis under the cell injury series. So let's dive into the topic. So coming to the important uh, cell form of cell death which is ferroptosis. Ferroptosis was ferro, it means iron, right? Iron. While ptosis is falling off. Ferroptosis is nothing but a form of cell death only in which free radicals are being implicated and that free radicals are actually produced by this ion in the Fenton's reaction like I mentioned. So, ion is the one which is responsible for this kind of a cell death. So, it is, can be also called as an ion dependent programmed cell death. It is a programmed cell death because it follows a certain set pathway, signaling pathways are being uh, followed. So, it is, a, it is also a type of programmed cell death but it is, infu, uh, it is induced by the presence of ion. So, it is called as an ion dependent programmed cell death. It was very recently identified actually in 2012 and the most important organelle involved in the ferroptosis is a mitochondria. So why is a mitochondria being involved over here? Because in, uh, incomplete oxidation happens, it will lead to the formation of free radicals. So mitochondria is a main source of free radical formation and also because iron metabolism has a role in mitochondria, mainly takes place in the mitochondria. So both of these causes lead to the mitochondrial damage. It is the mitochondria which is getting damaged in the ferroptosis. So that is where you see the changes in ferroptosis. It is distinct from the other forms of cell death like necroptosis or apoptosis. It is neither necroptosis nor apoptosis because it differs from it both morphologically, biochemically and mechanically. Every, every other form it differs from them. So morphologically what happens is in necrosis we know the cell size will be swollen and the cell will get uh, undergo cell swelling and the nucleus will be shrunken, pycnosis will happen and the membrane will be damaged and in apoptosis we saw it was the cellular shrinkage, nucleus also shrinks which is the pycnosis or nuclear chromatin condensation and here again the membrane will not be damaged in apoptosis right. So in ferroptosis what happens is the cell size will be normal this nucleus will again be normal and the membrane is intact. None of the changes in necrosis upon apoptosis happens here. Everything is uh, normal. Only mitochondria will show damage and that can be seen electron microscopically. That is ultra structurally only we can see the changes that is present in the mitochondria. So what happens in the mitochondria? First thing is the number of cristae present in the mitochondria will either be decreased or it will be, uh, be absent. So number of uh, cristae gets decreased. Then the mitochondrial outer membrane gets ruptured and the membrane, the outer my, my mitochondrial membrane will have an increased number of mitochondrial density. It will become thicker and dense, uh, denser, okay, that thing. And the num uh, mitochondria itself will shrink in size. So smaller mitochondria will be present. So these uh, things can be asked in MCQs as well. So biochemically what happens here is this uh, glutathione, GSH is actually glutathione. Glutathione which is an important mechanism of removing this uh, uh, free radical that is an antioxidant mechanism. So that will be decreased and GPX as I mentioned it is the glutathione peroxidase 4 which is the main enzyme of free radical removal. So that will be decreased. So both uh, glutathione peroxidase and glutathione will be reduced. So this will result in the increase in the free radicals. So free radicals will result in the uh, membrane lipid peroxidation and damage to the uh, membrane. To understand ferroptosis, we need to understand this diagram. It is very important. There are three pathways I am going to deal with. I had represented it in different colors, the violet one, the pink one and the blue one. Okay. So first we will start with the pink one. Here what happens is there is a membrane receptor called as transferrin receptor. So transferrin receptor is a receptor. This is this uh, TFR is transferrin receptor. Transferrin receptor is the one which is responsible for iron to uh, uh, enter into the cell. So iron in its ferric form, iron in its ferric form will enter into the cytoplasm via this transferrin receptor. This uh, ferric ion will get converted into its ferrous form which is Fe2+. So we saw that ferrous form is the one which was involved in the Fenton's reaction, right? So this Fe2 plus fer uh, ferrous ion, it will in turn react with hydrogen peroxide and it will lead to the formation of hydroxyl ion which was the sub, uh, which was the free radical right so this is the fenton's reaction this hydrogen peroxide which was formed will result in the formation of free this is a free radical right so it will result in the formation of lipid peroxides peroxides right so lipid peroxide is being formed 
This is the first pathway. Remember, iron has led to the formation of uh, lipid peroxides which, uh, because of the free radical production. Next, moving on to the second pathway. Here, again in the membrane, we have something called as PUFA, which is the polyunsaturated uh, fatty acid which was present in the membrane. With the help of the enzyme ACSL4 and LPCAT3. Remember, ACSL4 and LPCAT3, it will uh, catalyze the reaction wherein this PUFA gets converted into PE PUFA. PE is nothing but phosphatidyl ethanol amine. This phosphatidyl ethanol amine PUFA will again form lipid peroxidase with the help of the enzyme lipooxygenase. Lipooxygenase is an enzyme which will convert P, uh, phosphatidyl ethanol amine PUFA into lipid peroxidase again in the presence of iron. Okay, So, this is the second reaction which again had led to the formation of these lipid peroxides. Now, now moving on to the third pathway, we have a, a, a transporter called as a system XC. So, system XC is a transporter which actually uh, has a dual transport mechanism wherein system will enter into the cell and glutamyl with uh, it get is, uh, getting exchanged and it will reach out of the cell. Cysteine actually uh, is a part of the glutathione. It is, it is uh, needed for the formation of this glutathione. GSH is nothing but the reduced form of glutathione. Okay, So, cysteine will result in the formation of glutathione. Then we have this uh, uh, glutathione peroxidase 4. Right? Glutathione peroxidase 4 is the most important enzyme which is uh, needed for removing this free radicals. So, we had this lipid peroxides which were formed. So, these lipid peroxide, peroxides which are the harmful things which are formed are getting converted into alcohol form by the glutathione peroxidase enzyme. And during this uh, uh, reaction what will happen? This reduced glutathione gets converted into its oxidized glutathione which is GSSG. So, now we have the glutathione peroxidase, if it is present, it will convert these lipid peroxidase peroxides, which is formed as a result of these free radicals. This is getting converted into a non-harmful alcohol form. Okay, so let me uh, explain this once again. We had three pathways. The first pathway in which iron enters through transparent receptor, then it gets converted. Ferric iron gets converted into its ferrous form. The ferrous form in, uh, in the form of Fenton reaction, it will lead to the production of the free radical hydroxyl ion. Then this hydroxyl ion being a free radical, it will result in the formation of lipid peroxides. Then the second pathway we saw the membrane uh, PUFA, which is the uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids, which will react in the presence of the free radicals. It will actually get converted into uh, phosphatidyl ethanol amine uh, PUFA in the presence of catalyzed by the enzyme LPCAT3 and ACSL4. So, this uh, uh, phosphatidyl ethanol amine PU, uh, PUFA will in turn get converted into lipid peroxidase with the help of LOX enzyme which is the lipooxygenase in the presence of iron. So, the second mechanism is done. This again had resulted in the formation of this lipid peroxides. The third mechanism was the transporter which resulted in the entry of cysteine and exit of glutamate. Cysteine is incorporated in the formation of glutathione. This glutathione, uh, uh, it will get converted into its oxidized form of glutathione which is GSSG and during this reaction, the glutathione peroxidase enzyme GPX4 which was catalyzing this reaction, it will also convert the lipid peroxides which were formed because of the free radicals, it will get converted into its uh, non-harmful form which is the alcohol, lipid alcohols will be formed. So, this glutathione peroxidase is the most important enzyme over here, right? So, when, what, what is the result of this formation of lipid peroxides? These lipid peroxides will actually result in the form of cell death called as ferroptosis. Whenever these lipid peroxides are accumulating, it will result in the formation of the cell death called as ferroptosis. So, what we need to understand from this diagram is that we have many targets which can be blocked. So, these can either result in the increase in the ferroptosis or a decrease in the ferroptosis. So, let us see that now. I am blocking this system XC. So, what is the system XC? The transporter, right? So, system XC is blocked by this uh, drugs like erastin and sulfasalazine. So, whenever I block this transporter, what happens? Cysteine cannot get enter the cell. When cysteine is not entering into the cell, glutathione cannot be formed. If glutathione is not formed, glutathione peroxidase will not be able to convert lipid peroxides into lipid alcohol. 
so what will in turn happen lipid peroxides will be increased in number so this lipid peroxides will actually increase the ferroptosis right so whenever system x is blocked it will lead to ferroptosis right next the second target i would like to highlight here is the gpx4 itself the glutathione peroxide 4 itself if i either inhibit or inactivate or degrade this enzyme what will happen again lipid peroxides cannot be converted into uh, lipid alcohols so lipid peroxides will lead to ferroptosis so this again will result in ferroptosis so what are the drugs which can inhibit this uh, glutathione peroxides it is rsl3 which is ras selective lethal molecule 3 so rsl3 fin56 and fin o2 so all these three can inhibit this glutathione peroxidase and that will result in an increase in the ferroptosis so moving on to the next uh, example here i can block this enzyme enzyme right acsl4 lp cat3 the enzyme which catalyzes the formation of lipid peroxides if i am blocking this enzyme with drugs like vitamin e ferrostatin 1 or riproxstatin 1 so whenever this is getting inhibited what will happen lipid this reaction cannot uh, happen so lipid peroxides will not be produced so this is actually decreasing ferox uh, ferroptosis agreed so ferroptosis is decreased over here the fourth one i need to explain here is this transparent receptor if i am blocking this transparent receptor the uptake of iron will not be there into the cell so when uptake of iron is not there fenton reaction will not happen then lipid peroxides will not happen so it means ferroptosis will not happen so this mechanism will actually decrease ferroptosis so how am i going to block this transparent receptor i am going to chelate the iron iron chelating agents like desferoxamine can be given which can chelate the iron preventing it from entering into the cell right so this is a very very important i am stressing it again and again because it is one of the most important and newly recognized form of cell death multiple uh, mcqs are being expected from this diagram itself in the upcoming exams so let me uh, summarize it for you here increase in ferroptosis was when we had inhibited the system xc right system xc was the transporter in which cysteine and glutamate were involved right exchange of cysteine and glutamate happened so the system xc is uh, inhibited so ferroptosis will be increased same thing for rsl3 this is actually inhibiting the gpx4 enzyme while fin56 and fin o2 these will actually degrade the gpx4 enzyme so all of this will result in the increase in the lipid peroxides this again will result in ferroptosis so to the left of the diagram we saw two pathways ferrostatin 1 liproxatin 1 and vitamin e these were actually inhibiting the ac sl4 enzyme and the lp cat3 enzyme so pufa was not getting converted into the lipid peroxides so ferroptosis will be decreased over here same thing for desferoxamine which is iron chelating it will actually block the iron from entering into the uh, cell so again fenton reaction cannot take place so that will result in the decrease in the ferroptosis it is a very important table so the lipid peroxide was the most important thing which had resulted in the ferroptosis so we can rightfully called that as the marker of ferroptosis so the marker of ferroptosis is the lipid peroxides by measuring the number of lipid peroxides we can know the uh, state of ferroptosis in the cell so this is a very important question the marker of ferroptosis is lipid peroxides while the master regulator of ferroptosis because all of this will not happen when gpx4 is present right so glutathione is present glutathione peroxidase is present so this whatever this lipid peroxides are being formed it will get degraded right it will be converted into lipid alcohol so gpx4 is the master regulator of this ferroptosis so these two are again important questions so coming to the clinical significance of ferroptosis it has been implicated in various cancers like pancreatic cancer renal cancer hepatocellular cancer and other than that gastric cancer colorectal cancer breast cancer as well so lung cancer so all cancers have been implicated and other than that we have neurodegenerative disorders like auto, uh, alzheimer's disease parkinson's disease Huntington's disease, all of this, and here MI and ischemia reperfusion injury as well. So all of this has been implicated in the disease pathogenesis of uh, ferroptosis. So now we had read about all the forms of cell death: necrosis, apoptosis, 
necroptosis, pyroptosis and then ferroptosis. We will have a brief summary over here. In apoptosis, we saw the cell will undergo cell shrinkage and nuclear condensation which is again nuclear shrinkage and here the membrane is always intact. So, when membrane is intact, inflammation will not be present. So, in necrosis, we saw it was cell swelling. Then here nuclear shrinkage will be present and membrane will be damaged and that will result in inflammation. While in necroptosis and pyroptosis, we had some parts of necrosis and some parts of apoptosis, right? So, necroptosis was programmed necrosis, meaning the pathway it follows is that, is that of the uh, extrinsic pathway of apoptosis is slight overlap with the extrinsic pathway of apoptosis but here caspase is not activated but then the morphology is again that of the necrosis so we again see neck cell swelling nuclear shrinkage and membrane uh, damage and inflammation over here coming to pyroptosis pyro it means fever it was because of interleukin 1 activation which was again because of the activation of caspases uh, the only other uh, form of cell death which is having caspase activation other than apoptosis is pyroptosis. So, the uh, uh, caspases which are activated here was 1, 4, 5 and 11 while in apoptosis it was caspases 3, 6 and 7 which was the execution caspases and 8, 9 and 10 which were the initiation caspases. And again pyroptosis led to the uh, morphology of the uh, necrosis only. So, again here cell swelling, nuclear shrinkage, membrane damage and inflammation will be present. Coming to ferroptosis, the very distinct form wherein the cell size is normal, the uh, membrane is intact, the nucleus is normal. Only thing which we see here is the mitochondrial damage. In mitochondrial damage, we saw the four ultrastructural findings, loss of microcriste, then the outer mitochondrial membrane rupture, then increase in the mitochondrial density of the membrane and then lastly we can see about this uh, uh, mechanism of action. In apoptosis it was caspase activation while in necroptosis it was this RIP3 kinase activation, this ripoptosome formation right. So, that was the most important step. In pyroptosis like I told the caspases which were involved different from that of the apoptosis. In ferroptosis it was the free radical injury formation of the lipid peroxidase which were actually inhibited by the glutathione peroxidase 4 enzyme. So, lipid peroxide was the marker for ferroptosis and glutathione peroxidase 4 is the uh, master regulator of ferroptosis. So, uh, one other thing is programmed cell death I was telling. Programmed cell death is nothing but whenever there are multiple signaling pathways or regulated genes which are uh, regulating a certain form of cell death, we call it as programmed cell death. So, what are the programmed cell death we know of? Apoptosis, necroptosis, pyroptosis and ferroptosis. Other than necrosis, all of this were programmed cell death only. Thank you. Uh, in the next class, we will be seeing about another important topic which is autophagy. If you like my content, consider subscribing and we will meet in the next class. Thank you.